Zeppelin, 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 Zeppelin. And we got Zeppelin live. Y'all yeah, know, I, honestly, I feel like the studio versions of their music does a really good job of showing their chemistry. But obviously, you don't really get it until you understand that they literally go up there. They went up there on a nightly basis and just kind of ad-libbed and freestyled around each other. They played the song, but performed it differently every single night. And so when you watch them, you really understand that. It's, uh, I mean, impressive, I don't even think is the best word for it, but we'll just say impressive. It really, really is, man. This is No Quarter. This is live in Madison Square Garden, 1973. Um, my first time hearing this song and it's been a while since i've started with a live recording or a live performance before a studio but that's how the cookie the cookie crumbled this time so um really excited really excited ready to see it ready to hear it zeppelin live is always a good time so i'm sure i won't be disappointed let's go Okay, I'm not tripping. His audio really sounds like that. Like I like the underwater effect that I'm hearing. Like that's actually in the video. I'm not tripping. That is eerie as hell. And y'all got to tell me what who inspired Robert Plant in his stage movements and presence? The hands, the hands on the waist. I mean, he's just like, I mean, just talk about selling sex. You know what I mean? But in a not flamboyant way, but it's very... I don't know how to describe it. Like, but he's just selling himself up here. Like, y'all gotta tell me, like, who's the first rock and roll front man to, to, like, open shirt, you know what I mean, long hair, hand on the hip. Y'all gotta tell me, like, who inspired Robert Plant and his quote-unquote style in, in regards to stage presence and things like that. It's like, it's crazy, bro. The winds of far blow. They wear and steal the sky and the tree.
That song is a vibe. And I could definitely tell that I probably should have uh, listened to the studio version. Not only is it the studio version longer, but you could just tell that how that song ended or how that song left off. Um, I don't know. I just felt like there was a build up to something. And maybe they, during their live performance, like they, they just kind of transitioned to the next song from that. But you could just tell that song kind of leads up to something. But okay, No Quarter appears on their 1973 album, Houses of Holy, written by John Paul Jones, Jimmy Page, and Robert Plant. The song became a sim. You know what? No, not the first. I was about to say, is this the first song that I've actually, where I'm reading that they wrote a song? Because we know they did a lot of covers. And I feel like almost every reaction that I've done, it was some sort of cover to somebody else's song. Or it was already somebody else's song and Jimmy might have added something or threw something in. But this is the first time that I'm reading that they wrote. I'm probably I'm probably wrong about that, but uh, the song became a centerpiece at all Led Zeppelin concerts thereafter until their final tour. It appears in both the film versions and both live albums of the song remains the same, released in 1976 and expanded in 2007. It appeared once more in 1994 on Page and Plant's reunion album as the title track. Gotcha. Although an early version was recorded at the Led Zeppelin four album sessions, No Quarter was recorded in 1972 in at Island Studios in London. Andy Johns engineered. The title is derived from the military practice of showing no mercy to a vanquished opponent and from the brave act of not asking for mercy when vanquished. This theme is captured in several of the song's lyrics. Like Immigrant Song, two albums prior, it evokes imagery from the Vikings and Norse mythology with lyrics such as the winds of Thor are blowing cold. record producer Rick Rubin I swear I don't think I've gone a week since I've started doing reactions on music and not mention Rick Rubin's name honest to God uh, record producer Rick Rubin remarked on the song structure it takes such confidence to be able to get really quiet and loose for such a long time Led Zeppelin completely changed how we looked at what popular music can be Amazing. I really, really liked it. And I guess that kind of, that last part, uh, what Rick Rubin just said about a song being slow for that long. So, I guess there is no build up, huh? I, I can definitely tell I got to listen to the studio version. So, that's what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll let a week or two go by and then we'll, we'll, we usually do studio then live, but we'll do it the other way around and we'll do the, We'll continue the series of live versus studio, which is better. Um, I'm almost certain the studio, just off of the fact that the studio version is longer, it's, it's more than likely going to win. But um, I could definitely tell I got to hear the studio version. But all in all, and it's funny that John Paul Jones is known as writing this song. Um, even though everything sounded incredible, you know, guitar, drums, and everything. I really feel like John Paul Jones on the keyboards really stole the show. It, it really was the, the, I don't know, it was just kind of the root of everything that happened in this song. And I really think John Paul Jones stole the show. John Paul Jones doesn't get talked about enough. And it's understandable because you're, you're standing next to the, arguably the greatest front man of all time, one of the greatest guitarists of all time, and one of the greatest drummers of all time. And John Paul Jones is like, 
he he's he's just he, he's good. He's good. Um, psychedelic rock, progressive rock, Atlantic record, Atlantic records. Um, yeah, so that's what we'll do. We'll react to the studio version soon. Um, because I can definitely tell I'm missing out on, on something. Like I can tell those four minutes that's not in the live version is is very important. So we'll definitely check it out. But the three minutes that I did here, I really enjoyed, loved everything about it. And I can't wait to hear more Zeppelin, man. Y'all let me know what else I need to check out. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time with Led Zeppelin. Peace.